please tell me the story of how Coach Bobby Bowden talked your dad into hiring you as the offense coordinator at Notre Dame. Well, that is, this is, I didn't realize you were aware of that story, RJ, but really that is, that's how, uh, that's how I became the coordinator. And I had an opportunity to be a graduate assistant for Bobby Bowden. As a matter of fact, uh, went to Florida State, went to pulled into Tallahassee, walked into the football office. And the first person I met when I walked in the office is my wife. And we have been married for 30 years at this point. I uh, had a great relationship with Coach Bowden, the Bowden family. Spent two great years there as a graduate assistant. Went on to Colorado State with Earl Bruce, left there, went to Notre Dame, was at Notre Dame for two years as a position coach when the coordinator opened. I went in to see my father and I said, I want to come in and put my name in the ring for the offense coordinator spot. At the time, I was 27 years old. And he said, I can't hire you. I mean, you're 27 years old. You're my son. No, I can't. Who would you hire? Really? Like, be honest. And I was like, no, I'd hire me. That's who I'd hire. But since if that's out, I said I'd hire Mark Richt. I had the opportunity to work with Mark. Mark and I shared an office when I was in Tallahassee and just have an incredible amount of respect for uh, him, the man, the person, the mannerisms, the way that he coaches. I just think he, I think Mark was, was really good at what he does. So I told dad I'd hire Mark Rick. Uh, Coach Bowden called, uh, or my father called Coach Bowden and said, Coach Bowden, I'd like to have the opportunity to talk to Mark Rick as my offensive coordinator. And Coach Bowden said, that'd be great, no problem. But why have you on the phone if you hire him I want permission to talk to Skip to replace him. And I think that's where it became, oh, wow. So, all right, do I hire Mark and lose my son, or do I make my son the coordinator? And so that's really how I became the coordinator. And so I've got huge thanks to the Bowdens uh, for giving me the opportunity to be a coordinator and move on to be a head coach in this great profession. I'm going to say you set Tommy Reese up there because that's another young offensive coordinator that a lot of people didn't – think had the moxie and know-how to run that offense. And all they did was end up in the Fiesta Bowl last year. I'm very excited about where Notre Dame is headed. But I want to get back to Florida State here in a bit because a bit about myself, I spent part of my childhood in Panama City, Florida. So yeah. I came up going to see Charlie Ward play football. I knew that Randy Moss was there. I'm that kind of a, uh, a football fan. So I got to ask you, who was your favorite player while you got to see that seminal really program come into its own? Well, it was unbelievable because I went there the year after the All-American Bowl, which would have been in 1987 was mm. my first season uh, there at Florida State. And in 86, they played in the All-American Bowl, uh, beat Indiana. And so that was, the, in, 80, in 87, was the string of 11 win seasons uh, that Coach Bowden started. But we had some pretty good players. When you go back and look at, you know, we had Sammy Smith, we had Victor Floyd, we had, I mean, you look at um, uh, Dexter Carter was there. We had, uh, on defense, we had a little guy named Deion Sanders, some people might have heard of, uh, had him on defense. Just unbelievable, the amount of talent that they had put together on that team. Great staff. When you start talking about Chuck Amato, Mickey Andrews, Wayne McDuffie, Mark Rick, you look at all the guys that went on to become head coaches off that staff. Uh, Coach Bowden did a great job of building that program and surrounding himself, not only around great coaches, but great players as well. Goodness me. I mean, it's phenomenal through the 90s what Coach Bowden was able to do yes. in Tallahassee. And, I mean, you being a part of that, that's, that's big time, Coach. I got to ask, though, you know, you get to be the offensive coordinator at Notre Dame. And 93 seems to go pretty well for you, I got to yep. say. Like, seems like uh, but Coach Bowden knew what he was doing, and your father knew what he was doing. But I, among those two guys, what are the lessons that you take from being a part of two programs that win national championships or at least finish yep. number two in 93, depending on who you talk to? I wonder, do you think of that Notre Dame team as winning the national championship, or are you willing to give that up to the coaches in the AP? No, I'm not willing to give that up. <laughs> no, let's be honest. I'm not willing to. I'm not willing to give that up. Um, you know, I what a game. Let's start with that. We're undefeated. It's one versus number two, playing in South Bend. Uh, Charlie Ward, Coach Bowden, a lot of those coaches that I had been there with um, had the opportunity to play. What a great game! I know Sean Wooden bats the ball down at the very end of the game uh, to preserve the win. Well, we go to number one in the country. We're there for a week play Boston College the next week, and we lose on the very last play of the game. 
They return a kickoff, uh, end up kicking a long field goal to end up uh, beating us there. Um, So we held that title for a week, the number one slot. And then Florida State, who we had beat the week before, when we all went, I thought it should have been split. I thought both teams deserved it. Both teams were 11-1. and There wasn't an undefeated team. At that time, we didn't have the BCS to be able to win it on the field. Uh, You had to win it in the polls, whether that was with the coaches or with the AP. I know Coach Bowden had not won a national championship at that point for as long as he had coached for as successful as he had been. So I certainly don't think that they weren't deserving. I do think they were deserving, but I also think that Notre Dame, Notre Dame team uh, was very deserving of a national championship that year. It's an interesting point, Coach. Uh, it's one that I raise about Alabama and Georgia this past year is if we don't have a college football playoff, we might be looking at Alabama as a national champion and or Georgia as a national champion, depending on how the votes go. Yeah. We could be here all day. I got a thing about people voting for national championships as opposed to the scoreboard deciding what that is. Agreed. So, Coach, I wanted to fast forward about, let's say, 10 years, give or take, uh, to really one of the seminal moments, I hope, of your career, which is your offense coordinator at South Carolina. Once again, uh, I believe working for your father. Yep. And it's the, this is September 20th. So this is the first college football game back after the September 11 attacks, you're playing a ranked Mississippi State. How do you feel preparing and getting ready for that game? And what do you tell your guys? Yeah, like going back to what everybody went through. Everybody knows where they were. It's kind of like when, you know, when John F. Kennedy got shot, where were you? You know, where were you during 9-11, the towers? And I can remember we were, we were preparing at South Carolina for a Bowling Green team that had a young Urban Meyer was the head coach. And we were supposed to play them that week. The game got canceled, obviously, as all the planes came out of the air uh, and everything else. And then we were uh, to play Southern, to play Mississippi State on Thursday night. I guess it was about two or three weeks later that we didn't play college football. And so we had the opportunity to be the first team back to play. We were also one of the first teams to fly, playing on a Thursday night. Then an incredible tribute that night uh, on Thursday night on national television, playing at Mississippi State and. Uh, what a great venue. Jackie Sherrill was the head coach there at Mississippi State at the time. Uh, they had Pig Prather. They had a, a number of All-Americans, some great, great players, and turned out to be a heck of a football game. But um, that was, a, I don't want to say eerie, but it was really, it was a special moment being there, listening to 70,000 people not make a sound, and it being just church pew quiet uh, in there. It was uh It was really a pretty real, it was a pretty real experience to go through. Thanks for watching this video. And remember, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any other videos on the number one ranked show YouTube channel.